to Motorcycle Live 2019 here in the UK at the NEC in Birmingham. Hello, Birmingham! Sorry, that's just a, a throwback to my gigging days. Oh, yes. Lovely jubbly. Doo -doo -doo. Right. Right, leaving the bike park now and into the NEC. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf. Hope you're enjoying the channel and the series of videos. Please like, share, subscribe, leave comments below, check out the website revelatoralf.com and check out the links in the description below. Right, so just uh, fighting my way through the maze here to get to the bike show. A uh, bit of a walk, see you at the entrance. Right, here we are, Motorcycle Live, just about to go in, ticket in hand. Let's go and see what's on offer. Right, so here we are. Huge show, biggest show in uh, Great Britain or United Kingdom, I should say. And uh, right here, straight away, one of my favourite bikes uh, manufacturers, British, man British manufacturer CCM. They're just making really cool bikes. That's nice, look at this. CCM are one of those manufacturers that see. Started a few years ago, but but maybe seven or eight years ago at the uh, bike show, they were a little tent, just a one bike with a little tent here. Now look at them, you know, a nice big display, lots of bikes, lots of variations, and getting a good name for themselves as well. Just looks great, doesn't it? Look at that tubular frame. Wow, look at this. As I say, you know, it's all coming off a similar kind of frame here. This is a Spitfire, this is a Foggy Special. Um, 600cc, single cylinder, four strokes, 62 brake horsepower, 58 newton meters at 5,500 RPM. And this is just a, this is a mini beast, this is lovely. Yeah, Carl Fogarty Special from World Superbike fame, of course. Bit of a hero uh, in the UK. That's so nice, I do like that. Got that big fat front end as well. Nice. So, so you know, they're all say going off the same frame pretty much. And then just lots of variations on the theme. But get yeah, all still using this 600cc single cylinder. Nice. have a bit of a spitfire in the, in the house as well. Bikes, I'm look at this one, this is nice. Lots of custom bikes now. They're getting a really good name for themselves, CCM. I am a fan, for sure. Right, let's walk around a bit more, shall we? Kawasaki. Always put on a good, good show to Kawasaki, i got to say. So where'd you go first? Right, look at this. There are four halls here. Uh, so I literally just started, so let's just <laughs> keep on walking around, see what we find. Oh, Herald, Herald, these are great bikes. Again, another British manufacturer just uh, popped onto the scene a few years ago. Now, just going with the whole lifestyle thing. As I said last, last year, the, the 2018 review, going with heavy on the lifestyle thing a bit like CCM but just making some really cool bikes and they're not the most power 400 cc sort of single cylinder uh, what are they 20 this is a 124 cc yeah so they're making sort of smaller bikes up to 500 cc I think yeah 4 450 this one the brute Brute 500. And they just look so cool. Look at that headlight. This, it almost looks as if it's got like a leather feel to it as well. I, I do like Herald as well. And I say they are just a really cool bike to have. Smaller bikes, small displacement engines, but a variety as well. But look at this, aren't they? You know. They're coming on strong with the lifestyle stuff. I like it. Right, on to the next one. Sony and sidecars. 
Nice. Huskies. Great off road. Look at this one. 701. Oh, uh, it's appealing, yeah. Yeah, getting into their on road as well. Bikes. Just as KTM, the sister company or the parent company, have. But KTM, great, great pedigree. Always put on a great show as well. A great display, KTMs. Here we are, just come across Indian. Look at these. As I said, I think, you know, Indian are really making a big play now to take over the mantle, really, uh, of Harley. They're not there yet, not in terms of numbers. And watch out my other videos for, the, for talking about the Harley versus Indian, especially on the Challenger. But, I mean, you can't argue with some of the looks. This FTR 1200 is a great looking bike as well. And this Hooligan flat tracker, I mean, just look at that. Look at that. So nice. That FTR is just something else as well. You know, if I was going for a, another sort of bike, I would seriously consider that. Nice. Get really good reviews as well. That one. And you got the FTR 1200 in its different guises. This is a rally version. Beauty. Oh, that is a really nice look. Totally different uh, uh, setup this year. Last year they were all on racks, and there's a few bikes in front, they're all on racks. Now they've got a much bigger stand. And this is what I mean by Indian. Each year they're getting bigger and bigger, more of a presence, more of an influence. That rally, I mean, love that rally, lovely bike. Look, I know, I mean, I know there's a lot of hype around Indian at the moment, and I think this is where, for me, I'm not so sure about them in terms of the, the front end styling. Never really liked this. Sort of, the, the Dark Horse, the Chief, like like everything else about it, apart from that, the front end. That's where it gets a bit. Ugh. Unless obviously you're into your big tourers then. Definitely with these, uh, the Chieftain and the Roadmasters, you know, and um, you know, all their tour range. I mean, it's say if, if you're into that kind of big tourer bike, you know, that big, making a big statement on the road, the lots of chrome and stuff. Yes, definitely. But again, I say this is from a styling point of view, I'm just not so sure about this. It just seems really boxy to me. But you know, I know I'm picking holes in it and you know, try not to hate me too much. I think with the right colour combination, you know, it works great. It works great. Oh, this is no, oh, this is really nice. This is something completely new to Indian from since last year. Look, they got it from they're making a big play of the whole heritage as well where they've all started from, where they've come, gone to. I mean, look at these, beautiful, the board tracker. Lovely. That thug, custom scout, very nice. Beautiful. This is the one, <clears throat> this is the one everybody's talking about. Challenger Limited, this is the one. It, it's definitely, major competitor for Harley Davidson and their tour range. Again, if you like all that kind of thing, fine. Limited, not so sure. Dark Horse, yes, definitely. Much more my style. But it's a big brute of a bike, isn't it? So for me, I love these smaller bikes from Indian. You know, the Scout. And the front end isn't as bad for me as the other ones, not as pronounced. So it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot more um, usable, I think. And it looks a lot better on the road. See that, you know, with that front head like there, that's the way it should be. Nice. If they put that headlight on the rest of these bikes, I think it'd be better. No doubt Indian, but. They've got an impressive stand here this year. 
Right, let's have a look at Royal Enfield. So Royal Enfield, him lane, is kind of a bit of my secret pleasure right now, or my guilty pleasure. I'm actually after a, a smaller off-road bike. Not really interested in the power or something like that. It'd be good for a little commute. But I'm thinking, I hear good things about it. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. So that's for me what an off-road bike should be, you know, just small, compact, doesn't have to have a lot of power. Put some good knobblies on there, and that'll go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, you could go for the, you know, a proper off-road, you know, in terms of an enduro bike or a motocrosser. In terms of if you actually want to do a bit of adventure riding, you don't need the big adventure bikes, in my opinion. Just go for the smaller ones, much better. That's a nice one, look at that. Well, I suppose the Motorcycle Live show wouldn't be uh, complete without uh, a walk around the Triumph stand. Let's go and have a look. Oh, yeah. Scrambler 1200. I don't care what anybody says, though. For a Scrambler, for me, they need to be smaller, a lot smaller, and more compact. Very capable bike. It's great. But just like their adventure bikes, they're big, you know, big, top heavy, and, and heavy. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a bit too old for all this. As a road bike, no problem. As just riding trails, no problem. But if you're getting into serious stuff, they're just too, they're just too big, too heavy. You want something small that you can manhandle, you know? The Tiger 800. I see many people would say that is a better option than the 1200, which is over here. And this is what I had. I had the XCA 1200. It was a great bike. As I say, for the serious off road stuff, just too heavy. Get the impression that somebody's just flung mud at this. <laughs> Just as last year, Triumph have put on a really good stand as well. And they, they, their bikes are impressive. And the great thing about Triumph is that they've got a good range of bikes, from the sports bikes to the, you know, the, the heritage sort of style bikes, the custom bikes, the adventure bikes, of course. They've got a broad range, broad appeal. And that's what a lot of people really like about them as well. Yes, they're a British brand, but you know, people are liking what they're doing. Yeah, look at that thing. Beautiful. That ah, is nice. Olin's front end, Brembo base. This is your bobber. 1200, Bonne yeah, Bonneville. 1200, nice. 15, 15,500 though, for that. It's a lot, Monoshop, rear. I mean, it, look, it looks the business, no doubt. Cool, put the Africa to influence paces. Interesting, Honda seems to be a bit understated this year. Yeah, they've got a big play on their Africa Twin. Lots of good things being said about the Africa Twin. I, say, I haven't ridden it myself, but lots of good things have been said about it. But not as big as in previous years, not as grandiose, you know what I mean? Crazy horse here, always do a good stand. Very nice. Do a lot of custom custom builds. They're a, d a dealership for Indian as well, I believe. Yeah, it's just a bit. They've got it just. I think it was last year. They're very similar. They say, right, okay, here are our bikes. That's it. Not a lot else going on. I think if you're a Honda fan, fine. I think if you're a Honda fan, absolutely no problem. If you kind of, yeah, then I think the stand is a bit, yeah, as well. That's nice, look at that. Ho, 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 flat tracker. 
beauty. See here's, I mean this is the, you know, this is the gold ring. I mean this is going to be the one that is going to be the major threat going forward for Harley and for like even for Indian to stop them, you know, coming up. It's not so much the style, it's not so much the design, which I don't really care for myself. What it is, it's the technology. Technology on these things is just amazing. Looking to go forward, that's what people may want to really go for as well. Suppose if you're into your ultimate comfort touring ride, that's the bike you need to go for. In terms of style, not for me. Honda Rebel. Yeah, I think they've got proportions. Yeah. Some bits good, some bits not too sure. That is a big drop down to the seat there. I've got a feeling somebody who's designed that uh, has come from the off-road world and they used to ride a lot of dirt bikes from years ago and uh, they thought, right, okay, we'll have a real sunken seat in a really high uh, fuel tank, petrol tank, and that looked really cool. Yeah. Mm. Ah, the Honda Cub. I love this bike. Beautiful. Still one of my best bikes of all time. Oh, Honda Cub. And I say it every year, I say it every every show I go to, look, it's Honda Cub. Oh, I love it. There's no doubt Honda make damn fine sports bikes. No doubt. And you get on one of those and you're riding a bike that feels complete. It feels secure. But if you're a fan of Honda, you'll love it. If you're not a fan of Honda, you'll know there's something missing. Something. Mm. But great looking bikes, no doubt. Right. Frantic. Again. They're coming back. They're coming on strong Fantics as well now. In the off road world. Making a big play, you know, against the uh, the other major manufacturers, and they look smart as well. All different CCs, 50 CC, 125s, so on and so forth, going up, getting into the electric bike world as well, and obviously their sister company with uh, the Caballero. Fanta Caballero, I think I love the, I love them. I love these scramblers, like these 250, 500, love them, absolutely love them. They were very close to me, my, my, my best biking show last season. But now, I, I love them, look at that, beautiful. And that's what I mean about, you know, an off-road bike. This is what a scrambler should be. Small, compact, yeah, it's gonna be heavy, but it looks good, and but you know you can get your leg over <laughs> in more, more, more ways than one. And but it's got the power to get you in and out of trouble. Easy to pick up once you're dropped off. The argument is, if you're going to go for those and do some serious off-road, you should actually just go for an enduro bike, not one of these. But I'm going to say, if you want that kind of thing, nice and look. You want that retro feel? Look at it. Right, so here it is, people. Harley. Totally different vibe going on this time. Let's just have a little walk around, shall we? Here it is. The live wire. There's no doubt Harley do this the best. They can't, you know, push in the lifestyle, putting on a show. That's the most important thing, they put on a show. See, I would say like, the, uh, the Indians and the Road King are very similar in terms of their front end. Not my kind of style, but there you go. Right, this is the bike that a lot of people are after or looking at for next year. Pan America. 
still a signing prototype. You know, they haven't really come out with the last the the finished product. But Harley, if you are watching, Harley, if you are watching this off-road world, okay, you need to have a guard there. You need to put it, split it, split that. Put one there, one the other side, put guards on it. Do not have that exposed there. It will just get ruined. And the off-road world, forget it. This is not a road bike, it's an off-road bike. That will get destroyed within a couple of minutes. Apart from that, the overall styling, I really like it. So it's, got the, it's got the lift called 1250 cc engine. It's nice. Monoshock suspension. Look, overall, this is a bike to compete with BMW, the Triumphs, you know, into that big adventure bike. And it will compete. And I think a lot of people, you know, if it's priced correctly, people will buy it. People will buy it. People will want a test ride. It will create a bit of hype, I think. But there's certain things, fundamental flaws in it that they need to address straight away. That radiator, first of all. If they don't, it, you know, it, people from the off-road world will look at it and say, well, actually, no, work, no chance, okay? You can't sell a bike like this and have it vulnerable straight away. You need to have protection. So you need to sell it with protection, like a guard, or you need to redesign it and split it and put them higher up. That's a nice colour, actually, isn't it? Gotta say. Yeah. But it, it just oozes comfort and everything. If you're talking about design, overall appearance, I think the, the Harley Davidson wins it hands down it, over any of the big tourers. Um, but definitely over the, the, the Goldwing and also the Indian. You can't compare them. They, they just look so much better. This is possibly the one that, the, the road glide, that is the, the nearest thing to the Challenger from India. And they kind of do look a little bit similar in terms of the front end. My leaning is still, in terms of appearance, the Harley Davidson. In terms of technology, the Indian. So I think, I always say this, probably in virtually every other video, but I always say that the Sportster, for me, in terms of proportions, in terms of overall look, and I know there are different designs, different styles, I still say that's one of the best Harley Davidsons in terms of appearance. I mean, look, at if you want something that's sleek, small, slim line, great lines like that, perfect. Great bike for riding, you know, in built-up areas. Yeah, I know you can ride them anywhere long distance, but you know, I mean, it just looks the business. This is coming from a sport glide rider, and that is just perfectly formed. Very nice. Yeah, I do love this street bob as well. See, this is where the street bob needs to go. It needs to beef up a little bit, uh, I think. Just a little bit. The fat bob is just, it's a hooligan bike. Great. But Harley Davidson need to look at the, the reaction from people on the soft tails. How much they're respected, how much they're attracting riders from other manufacturers now. They need to do that with the Taurus. That's why Indian are taking a leap forward. That's why other manufacturers like BMW or, or Honda with their gold ring are just with their chassis. They're a lot better. They need to change the Toro chassis, definitely. So this is going to be the, the, uh, the Bronx. That's a 975 engine. Basically exactly the same engine. They're just changing the top end, really. That's not a bad bike, actually. Takes a lot of his styling cues from some of the other sort of generic Japanese bikes. 
Look, it's it's a, it's a street fighter. It's a it's a bronze. You know, it's naked. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be nimble. If they got the balance right and the pricing right, that will make a play. And it's going to attract people who are not into Harley Davidson cruisers and tourists. It might just work that one. That's a great colour, isn't it? I mean, you've got to be confident to have that colour granted, but that is a great colour. <laughs> Dare I say it, the live wire isn't really attracting as much attention as I thought it would. FXDR, nice. Again, they've gone for this bright orange look. I mean, look, it, it looks a beast, doesn't it? You know, fat rear on it. I mean, look at that. You're not going to go around any bends on that, but I tell you what, you will have a lot of fun trying to. Okay, just coming out of the Harley Davidson stand, I was actually getting really worried. And I tell you what, I was getting worried. So I didn't see a Sport Glide. It's in every other Harley, but not a Sport Glide. Your mind starts wondering what's going on, but then you find it. <laughs> it's there. This is in the midnight blue colour, I think. Yeah. Nice, beauty. Isn't it a gorgeous thing? I'd say that because I got one. Love it. There we go. I, I can stop my panicking now. I found the sport glide, it's fine. This colour off the road glide, I tell you what, that is nice. See, I was never sure about having the mismatched colours here, but actually seeing it, it looks it looks quite nice. I think if I change the the covers on mine, I would still go for the wrinkle look as opposed to the the shiny gloss. It, it just doesn't seem to match up properly. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Harley. What happened to the barber? What happened to the bar? What happened? To, there's a more of a party vibe last year. This is a bit more. It's a bit more corporate. Mm, not so sure. Look, great bikes. Yes. I'm not sure they're going to win best in show this season, though. But it's an impressive sort. It's a bigger stand, Harley Davidson. Definitely, it's much bigger. And I think they're they're just doing like a lot of the other manufacturers are doing they're actually just putting their bikes on display and saying look here you go that's it there you go the live wire isn't really grabbing the attention the uh this is the one that i think people are going to be talking about and different reactions to it already guys walking around thinking no there we go it's nice isn't it so this is going to be the one that's supposed to save the 2020 year for Harley Davidson. Yeah, I'm not so sure. But you're going to have a lot of fun on that bike, that's for sure. That colour just looks grand, doesn't it? Right, let's walk around somewhere else, shall we? We'll come back here, I'm sure. Yeah, Ducati. There, scrambling. See, again, if you're going to make a sort of road scrambler, I would go for something like this. You know, put some nobblies on and you can have a bit of fun as well. Yeah, not strictly off-road bikes, but you know. Now, then, you want to go for a take it off-road, then you just go for this variant here. Small, compact. Yeah, this is where they've got it right. And they had this right a few years ago as well. You know, same with the Caballero, Fantic Caballero, and that sort of scrambler style. For me, Triumph got it wrong. They just got it too big. Too big. You don't need it that big. Ducati. Wow. Panagali V2. Oh, do you have L? Do you have LS? Do you have L1260? Oh, look at this. 1260, that's a dark, nice. 
go out to our 60. And this is a reason why it's actually coming up on top of the performance cruiser type bikes. It just looks good and it goes like a rocket as well. Adventure bikes. <clears throat> the fortunate thing about you know Ducati and their adventure bikes, people get them and yeah, I find they just keep them on the road, they never take them off road. But they are actually very capable, you know. Ducati for you the years. Also Ducati got a great racing pedigree as well. And their bikes, it's all about performance, power to weight ratio, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, nice, nice stand from Ducati, definitely. Bikes through the ages, also all their racing bikes. Great pedigree, great sort of options uh, for the different sorts of riding. Again, they've got a good, they've got a good um, setup here. Norton, let's go and have a look at Norton. They just look good, they always look good. These I loved last year. I mean, you know, you know me, I love my sort of off-road sort of bikes. And I love that. And I, I questioned last year the uh, the uh, the sump guard, you know, and that little wire mesh frame. I still think that's too weak. I mean, they do look great, don't they? Absolutely fantastic. But again, just like the Harley Pan America, for me, they're making the mistake of putting that uh, front radiator exposed too exposed at the front for off-road riding and you know you're advertising this as an off-road bike type thing because it looks kind of adventure style you need to actually put a, a more of a protection grill or split it and move it away a little bit it will be found out very quickly I'm afraid but I still like it I still like that bike and again small compact Triumph what were you thinking that's what it should have been interesting last year they made a much bigger play uh, from Norton for their Atlas and their Ranger bikes here it's a bit they look a bit isolated a bit forlorn there great bikes I said especially that Ranger I think you know that's a great looking bike and again you know Norton put on a good display here as well a bit of tech a bit of bikes a bit of clothing look at that thing carbon fiber frame swing arm and rear all carbon fiber wow nice look at that <laughs> oh v4 ss it's just amazing Great bikes, great display, big open display here from Norton, much bigger stand. In fact, a lot of the the manufacturers have gone for bigger stands this year, a little bit more spread out. Apart from the major ones like Ducati, Honda, Kawasaki seems to be, they're big, but a lot more bikes fitted in. Whereas the other brands have sort of spread it out a little bit more. Have a walk around them, get a feel for them. Yeah, I like it. Grinnell Indian Scout Trike. Lovely. And here we are at Yamaha. All the different R1s. I've got to say, out of all the, the race bikes, the sports replica bikes, Yamahas for me have always been the ones I thought, yeah, they look pretty good. In terms of styling, the Kawasaki's and Indians are the ones I always kind of lent towards, but they do look pretty snazzy. Look at that R1. Last year, Yamaha had a big uh, play here with the MT series of bikes. Uh, now they just got them all lined up. Now, you hear me talk about the scramblers and everything, uh, about, you know, so if you want to go for that retro style, let's say, go for a smaller bike. But if you want to go for some off-road riding, then you need to get one of these bad boys really uh, so obviously you go to motocross or you go the enduro route so you either obviously you want to ride a bit on road 
or off-road. Now for me, uh, you've got these, well, they've got the new variations here, but I'm just gonna quickly run through them for you. So basically you've got the WR range, WR250, I believe there's a 450 as well. For me, these are the ones that you wanna you know, go for, the four strokers, but <laughs> they are just ultra impressive off-road, these are. So this is a YZ250F, uh, the four stroke, this is a motocrosser. So you go for the Enduro uh, or the motocrosser, oh, there you go. So you've got the 250 and then you've got the 450. For me, the 450 is probably a little bit too powerful for off-road riding, but if you want to use it for um, more of a on-road, off-road bike, probably the 450. But if you're just going to go green lane and stuff like that, I'd go for the 250. You know, if you're going, obviously, proper motocrossing, then obviously you need to go for the YZF here. But for me, the, the, the Yamahas kind of win it hands down when it comes off-road riding. It's a personal preference, that's all, you know. You can't beat the old colours of Yamaha. I mean, just look at that. That old scramble, look at that. That's nice. Look, this is what I mean by having it higher up. Have it higher up, have a bit of protection there, and then you're not going to get all that crud uh, and all that damage onto the radiator straight away. Nice. So you can see where Honda have tried to copy uh, Yamaha, in my opinion, with their sort of Rebel or whatever it's called. But this, I mean, they came out with the XV950 oh, just a few years ago. It's a great bike, it's a great bomber style bike. Nice. And again, you know, the Super 10s, uh, the Tenere's, you know, the 1200 and the, uh, what's that one, 750 is it? They are great off-road bikes as well. Yeah, big, heavy, uh, but very capable as well. I mean, as I say, it's, it's the same with every one of them. If, it, if you're going for super uh, challenging off-road riding, no, they're not good enough, or oh, they're, they're too big. But for a big adventure tour, big, uh, lots of trail rides, that kind of thing, perfect. And that's the XT1200, yeah, Super 10 Raid Edition. And that's the 1200Z Super 10, 10 ring. Very nice. Right, so this is at the off-road track where you can come in there, test ride some of the uh, off-road bikes. I think they've got African Twins, they've got the Triumph uh, Scrambler, Royal Enfield, Himalayan, uh, and what else have they got? Uh, yeah, they've got the, the uh, Yamaha Tenere 700 and the Triumph, uh, Triumph Scrambler again up there. And they're all lined up over there, ready to go. Uh, just a parade round basically. Look, it's great because this is a great thing that they set up at here at the motorcycle a few years ago. You know, you're giving people an opportunity to actually just come and test ride another bike, but really, it's it's a very small, you know, experience. I'm not blaming them, it's not a criticism, but you know, you need to get these bikes out on the open road or long distance or on long stretches of dirt, really. But definitely, look, definitely, you know, the big bikes, you know, in sort of smaller areas, you know, they're the ones that need riding. You need to ride those a lot more. Whereas the small bikes, like the Himalayan, a lot easier to ride, a lot easier to ride off-road and, you know, have fun with. It will be my choice. And there it is, there it is riding by now. Sure, it might not have the power, but you know, a lot of people think that you need a lot of power off-road riding. You don't. You know, you can ha you can ride uh, uh, off-road anywhere with just very, very low-powered bikes. Right. Anyway, let's go and walk around. Loads of stalls, as you can imagine, uh, selling all sorts of stuff, different tech, uh, equipment personal equipment, 
insurance, clothing, helmets, bags, whatever. Workshop equipment as well. So that was the big adventure section, really. Lots of uh, stalls selling uh, adventure experiences, that kind of thing as well. I think it's time for a coffee, don't you? We like these. Beautiful. Yeah, good. Look at that. Look at that. 1914 nuts. 680 cc. I mean, look at that thing. Wow. Some beautiful bikes. This is all from the National Motorcycle Museum. They're doing live um, live restorations as well, working on these old bikes. And uh, you know what? There's a we're blessed in this country that actually quite a few motorcycle museums are dotted about the country and you can just pick there's some small collections as well you come across them and they just got some great little bikes there you know sometimes just a handful of bikes just fantastic though and sometimes we get all hot and bothered about the latest technology and having traction control and all the electronics and all that kind of stuff well actually all you need is two wheels and an engine and away you go Right, time for a coffee, I think. And some breakfast. I haven't had breakfast yet. Right, coffee's been had. Now, moving on. Uh, oh, look at these bad boys. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Can-Ams. Wow, look at that thing. No, I mean, they're not my kind of thing. I, you know, I'll, I'll sort of tell you straight however I got a feeling that these would be great fun to have a little blast on you know what I mean just cruising out oh wait, look at that thing there look at that great laugh right this is what I wanted to show you was completely different from previous years so a few years ago zero electric bikes right zero were just a half a gazebo right there weren't even anything every year they've just got bigger and bigger now look now look at what there are now lots of bikes all over much bigger stand much more of a show and they're, they're the, the leaders they're, they're the market leaders you know in this field now you know Harley Davidson they've got their live wire yes it's a stuttering start from them and they're they're really trying to come into a market that's kind of dominated by these bikes are actually producing good bikes and they're really good bikes as well right yes so uh, as i was saying i just bumped into an author there actually a uh, very nice chap uh, and uh does um writes about triumphs which is really good anyway uh so this is what i want to talk about you know zeros look they've really come on leaps and bounds the last few years that off-road bike that they've got there that actually came out uh, a few years ago uh, this is a Zero DSR. Uh, look, it's just, just great bikes. Look, the, people talk about the battery life and how much you're going to cost to replace the batteries. But we're, I suppose this is where my mind has changed completely regarding uh, Zero bikes or electric bikes in general. We're at, the, we're at the threshold of something really big and it's evolving year in, year out. As I say, this was just not even a little gazebo stand a few years ago now look they got a few bigger bikes and they're not only here they're not only here with a, a display of bikes they're here with a credible display of bikes and that's the thing you know other manufacturers electric bikes you know are coming up as well but these guys they're the ones who are actually you know in the lead a little bit and that's a lot to be said about that and I was just saying, the same to the chap I just spoke to. Now they are becoming bikes that you could quite legitimately say to yourself, yeah, I could have one of those. I could use some of those on a daily basis. Especially if you're not doing hundreds and hundreds of miles. If you're just doing your general commuting, one of these would be great. Abba stands, always good. <laughs> Mamma mia. I had one of those on my last bike. Brilliant, actually. Really good. Really stable as well. Lots of different designs for all sorts of bikes, actually. Really good. Well worth investing in. 
So if you can imagine, I'll sit really with electric bikes there, they're off-road bikes. Okay, if you can imagine uh, at zero a few years ago, it was half a gazebo. Now look at them. That's what else it'll be in a few years. If they get their market right, and if they can produce bikes that are in the road market as well as the off-road, you know, they'll do well. Right, here we go, look. Lots and lots and lots of stuff to buy. And it's just the same as, you know, all these big shows. The great thing is that you can come to here and you're actually gonna get a good deal on something. It is one huge market store, really, of anything that you want for your bike. Clothing, boots, helmets, gloves, jackets, racing jackets, whatever. It's all here. All on the periphery, you've got all smaller, Smaller brands, smaller outfits as well. Look, the cruiser stuff. Don't you just love Harley riders and those uh, those flannel shirts? <laughs> it, it, it's almost like it's a uniform now. Do you know what I mean? It, it, everything is like a uniform. No matter what you wear, you start riding it, so it catches on. Then everybody starts wearing it. Right, so here we come to the, the Black Horse stage here. Right, so this is where they have a bit of entertainment. Uh, usually, a lot of this is to do with sports bikes, sports bike riders, that kind of thing. So let's just get a little view. Yeah, once that's all that's it, it's in, that's good, it's good to go. Hopefully, you don't go and beat James Whitton. Very, very well. They've got shows going on all day, so it's lots to. Uh, Lots of come back and digest on that one. Right, let's get away from the uh, the market stage, the market stalls and the stage, as to say, and let's go and check out some more bikes. So, basically, just done the rounds, uh, just gone through most of the uh, the big players here. Uh, Triumph again, just fantastic, really. India. So look, I mean, just look at this. There's no doubt, Indian have. Uh, taken a leaf out of Harley's book in terms of the show. The show on uh, here for Motorcycle Live. They're making a big play, definitely. And as I said in the other videos, Harley watch out because they're coming on with technology now as well as branding, as well as lifestyle. Right. Oh, orange and black. Not Harley. No, KTM. <laughs> Look at these bad boys. My favourite type of riding, really, is sort of off-road riding. But you know, adventure riding, proper adventure riding, not uh, you know going down to the supermarket kind of adventure riding. But the Dakar Rally. Love that ride, that race. But look at that. Pretty much KTM have dominated that series for, for years now. And you know, they've got fantastic off-road pedigree. So KTM are the ones, you know, of, of the of the European brands for me that always put on a really good show and their bikes are just top notch. There's no doubt. You know, these, they're big adventure bikes as well. It's just, they, they are awesome. They are just awesome. The off-road bikes, the motocrosses, the enduros, top notch again. Look, if you're into off-road bikes, you're kind of going to get very excited about these, aren't you? Fantastic. Right, let's move on. There we go, BMW just finished their little demo ride there of uh, their bikes. And again, BMW are one of those brands that you think, no, they're Germanic. They're not, they're not exciting enough. But I'll tell you what, if you consider the, the sports bikes, right? Their sports replica bikes. 
out of the box they are pound for pound possibly one of the best bikes to take straight to the track and that's why so many people who are on the, on the racetrack love them because they're out of the box are just fantastic I mean just look at that beauty. S1000RR <laughs> right let's have a look at some of the easier ones around here now if you look at some of the um, you know the, the two big bikes for me that BMW do the S1000RR fantastic and obviously you've got the big adventure bikes as well they are kind of market leaders really or, or genre leaders but then you've got to look at the other ones you know that uh, see if I can find it here actually once a melee of people here we go right I mean look at this beautiful they're really coming on big with the you know with the retro styling as well I mean look at this beauty right, and the R90 I gotta say uh, look at that look if, if you like these kind of bikes then you're gonna love it if you don't like that sort of horizontally opposed engine then it's not gonna be for you because it is wide a bit chunky and it is a bit of a clunker but in terms of riding bike that is top-notch it's a really nice bike well there you go so this is a future BMW's answer for electric bikes look at this bad boy concept of production the vision DC Roadster Wow but, and again I hate to compare to you know the likes of the live wire live wire from Harley Davidson but if you're looking about electric bikes if you're looking to the future look at the look at the design on these things from other manufacturers and that you know okay yeah they've got to sort out the range they've got to sort out production they've actually got to take into production which at least Harley Davidson have done but just look at it yes it's not my style but look at where they are what you'll find is with the with the live wire that it will be obsolete you know within a year you know whereas these bikes will just be coming on and not just from BMW all over they're gonna overtake them I'm not so sure about that live wire. I'm not so sure whether it's going to be a success or not. I hope it is, but I don't think it will be. Right. And again, look, you know, you come, you come with the big tourer bikes, a K1600, an ultimate touring machine. You know, or you got the, um, is it the 1200, uh, no, the 1600 again. And look at that. I mean, that, you know, as a big tourer, that's a huge bike, and it's a lovely bike as well. Yeah, those 1600, look, you know, as I say, just like the Goldwing, you know, the, the, those are the ones that, if you want the big adventure bike, 1600. If you want the smaller one, it's a lot more user friendly, let's say, so the 1250 RT, which is this one here. If you want to have a bit of adventure, uh, but a big, really capable tourer bike, look, GF. You know, they're all the R, the R1250 here, and these are just great bikes for touring, and that, that's it. You know, and especially with one of these bikes, you can just go anywhere on them. I've got to say, BMW put on a good show. Actually, they always do. Every year, they put on a good display with their little de uh, demo uh, throughout the day. Uh, they show what their bikes can do, and in capable hands, you know, these big heavy lumps it can do anything they will go anywhere but say they've got to be in capable hands and you've got to be able to not only pick them up ride them but also pick them up when it goes wrong and the problem is when you start taking these big bikes off road the chances are you are going to drop them and you drop them and you drop them and at the end of the day you get so tired of you know picking them up but they are capable, just like the Triumph was, they're very capable. But they're not so capable that you can go everywhere. Lots of people would say, oh yeah, I can go over rocks, I can do this, I can do that. Yeah, maybe small rocks, but not big rocks, you know what I mean? But that's not what they're there for anyway. I think that what it is, is that you want to have a bike 
that you can explore beyond your natural borders. And with an adventure bike, that's what they do. They enable you to just go that little bit further, expand a little bit more. Whereas normal road bikes, you're restricted to the roads. That's why I love adventure bikes so much. But as I say, as I said before, in my kind of riding, I'd gone beyond the adventure limitation. I really wanted to ride a little bit harder in more challenging terrain, and they're just too big and heavy. So smaller bike for me for my off-road riding. Herald again. I mean, look at this. Oh, yeah, boy. Really? Do you know what I like about Herald? Is that they are, it's almost like it, you're going back 25, 30 years. Simple, stylish. I just like it. I just like that. I mean, look, if you're a one, two, you know, you're, is that a one, two, five there? One, two, five. You're a kid, you know, you pull up into school or college on one of those, you're going to be the coolest kid on the block. Do you know what I mean? Kawasaki. <laughs> Look at that Ninja Thousand SX. Look at that deep green. That is some bike. Always been a big Kawasaki fan. Had quite oh, a couple over the years. Uh, my last one was the ZR 1400. Love that bike, but always love the, the hooligan nature of the, the Ninjas as well. Just love them. Great bikes. There we got the H2, Ninja H2. 26 grand, yeah. Wow. I don't know. I mean, how fast that'll go? 250, supposedly. I think somebody once got 300 miles an hour out of it. The unrestricted one. Something ridiculous. Like that. Oh, I don't know. Again, with the retro styling as well. You know, that Z900, look at that beauty. Absolute beauty. Yeah, the, the old school colours as well. I love it that, the, you know, the, most of the, the big manufacturers at least have actually not only just gone forward with the evolution of their bikes, they're also looking backwards and they're all, always looking at yesteryear and the cool bikes from yesteryear as well, as opposed to just keep on looking forward. But here, look, ZZR 1400, probably one of the best bikes ever from Kawasaki. I had one, love this bike. Fast as you like, but you're stuck to the ground. No dramas at all. Look, it's a fusion of old and new here. You know, the old styling, the new styling, Love it. ZX10s. Oh. If I had to have a sports bike, which I wouldn't now, but a few years ago I was thinking about getting one. Actually, it was just before I got the ZZR 1400. If I was going to get one, out of all of them that I test rode, the ZX10 was the one for me. It wasn't as planted, it wasn't as finely engineered as, let's say, the, the Honda. But i tell you what that would put a smile on your face and that would get you know get your heart racing uh whereas on the honda you just it felt too good too safe too well refined and it was a little bit boring i gotta say uh for me anyway but that was just amazing yeah the vulcan s you know what i uh, you know a lot of people are against the japanese doing the sort of cruiser bikes you know the bobber style bikes but I tell you what, it's not a bad effort. That is not a bad effort. Uh, the Japanese ones so far, Kawasaki are producing the best ones, definitely. Honda, nah. Yamaha, middle of the road. Yeah, I would say that was the best one so far. Oh, look at these, MV Augustus. See, got so worked up about the Kawasaki, almost missed the MV Augustus. Look at these bad boys. Ho, ho, ho. Super Veloce. Super Veloce 800. Oh. Italian. 
you just look at these bikes and you think, my oh, crikey. It's just engine and frame. Bosh. That brutality, it's going to be brutal riding that for sure. Just look at that. It's just what you say about, you know, Augusta motorcycle, uh, uh, motorcycle art. And I think that's what it is about, uh, you know, MV Augusta. It is just motorcycle art. They're just, they are fantastic looking bikes. They are, they are seat your pants riding. You get on one of those, you're going to be hurtled down, hurling down the road uh, at a rate of knots and you're going to have to hang on for dear life. Love that. Oh, super, uh, super psycho V motor, okay. Look at this, it's nice. I'm telling you, electric bikes, that's what it's all about, electric bikes. Okay, so nice area right at the back end here. That's a little motocross section and uh, for the kids uh, to have a little run around as well. And then right through there, they've got the uh, motocross, uh, freestyle motocross uh, display as well, uh, which we're probably going to have a little look at later on. Here we are, one of the uh, leading custom bike magazines uh, in the UK, Backstreet Heroes. Uh, I'm actually, you know, I'd, I'd get their bike, their magazines. They're really good. I like them. Yeah. Nice. Not any time soon, hopefully. <laughs> Look, I mean, this kind of thing it makes me laugh, really. You know, they shouldn't, you know, just no, just stop. No, just don't do it. Okay, so sometimes the manufacturers, they get it so right, and other times they get it so wrong. Uh, no. Uh, no. However, that one with that lady sat on over there, I call that CCM looking uh, bike over there. Just like, there we go, that K light. Yes, that's good. That's a good bike. Benelli. Oh, oh, oh. See, another one of my favourite brands as well from years ago. Love these bikes. And this um, fair sort of adventure bike here. Now that is a good bike as well. Yeah. Very nice. 502, lovely. Look, mid-range bikes. That'd be great. That's what I love. You know, I love these the bikes that all the manufacturers that come out, smaller manufacturers, they're doing things and making variations and you know putting their own spin on things as well. And then you have, you know, right next to the big manufacturers, you have the small manufacturers as well. It is like David and Goliath here, you know, Suzuki against, you know, what whatever it is. Just, just amazing. Now look, Suzuki again, one of my favorite brands of all time, Suzuki. You know, I, I loved, I loved the bikes back there. I've had you know, a couple of Suzukis in my time. Love that one, look at, this, look at these older bikes here. Absolutely fantastic. Great heritage, great racing heritage. Great styles of bike, different styles of bikes that they've had over the years as well. Uh, beauty. The old racing bikes. A lot of the big manufacturers have done this this year. They're almost trying to show, well, look at our heritage. Look at how far we go back. Look at how many bikes we've put on. I think it's great, don't get me wrong, but it seems as if a lot of them are, are selling the same story. Indian, Honda, Kawasaki. You know, they're all selling that same a lot we've been doing it for a long time which they have but you know what I mean a lot of people would say about you know getting your big adventure bike you go for your BMW your Triumph your KTM whatever you could go you could do a lot worse 
and the Suzuki Beast from I'm telling you. Very capable off-road and it's, it's just a great bike. Great bike. The Kawasaki Versus is a great you know, off-road bike as well, or adventure bike I should say. Now, so this was the Katana that was released last year and I, you know, I'm still undecided about it. I was a huge fan, probably one of my favourite bikes of all time is the original Katana, GSX uh, 1100 uh, Katana. I wasn't, so con I wasn't so convinced by this. They, they're all very similar, they're all very of the same ilk now. You know, when you're going for a Katana, it has to be something completely different. And there are too many features on it that looked exactly the same as, you know, every, everything else. But if you look at these V-Strom, look at that one there. Now, if you're into off-road riding bikes, I'll tell you, as I said, great bike. And it looks the business as well. So here's a good brand that you might want to look out for, HAP from uh, Portugal as well. And there's some great bikes, uh, off-road bikes, uh, for a few years now, actually. Look at those. As I say, if you're into your off-road bikes, great. If you're not, then you know just ignore that section of the video. The meek shall inherit the earth. Kimco. The small bike manufacturers, as I say, they're the ones that are going to sell the units. They're the ones around the world that are pushing up sales. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you're, you know, looking for an urban bike just to get about to town, then this is the one. All, all that kind of style, that kind of size, I should say. If you want to get to your children into biking, you know where's boy or girls, you know, that kind of style, that kind of size, will get them into it. And it won't cost you a lot of money. That's the most important thing, I suppose. Here we are, look at these aerial, oh, the aerials. Aerial Nomad, you've got the aerial Atom, but you've got the aerial, like, the aerial Ace, look at this thing. Oh, look at that front end. That monoshot front end, monoshot rear. Oh. Wow. The Olin's front end, the Minishop front end. <coughs> 76 degree Unicam Honda V4 engine, 1237cc, 173 brake horsepower, 129 newton meters at 8750 RPM, six speed manual, anodized machine, and welded aluminium frame. Ho ho ho. There we go, there's the aerial car and these aerial aces here. And then all the way through their ages. I mean, not, obviously aerial have been around for many, many years uh, with some of their old, obviously really old bikes. Obviously. Then they've come back into life. First of, all, we'll, first of all with the cars and then obviously coming out with the, the ace as well. But they just look awesome, don't they? You know, that's just you and machine riding down the road. That's it. Fantastic. Well, that's it. Pretty much uh, walked around the uh, the whole show. Lots of lots of great bikes here. Again, for me, I think CCM have really stolen the show. You know, for the from the British side. Uh, not so sure whether. Norton and, and Triumph have really put on that much of a show. Uh, but I'd say CCM for me have really, you know, come on strong this year again. Uh, especially with their especially with their Spitfire range. These are great bikes, absolutely great bikes. And I say if I was if I was in for one of these bikes, if I wanted a single seat bobber, oh do you know i would be very tempted to go for one of these bikes i must say very tempted do you know what i like about this what i like about this is i think this is an insurance company they're not boring are they you know insurance companies are we're filled with people you know gray with gray skin and you know they uh, talk you know they're monotone but no, no, these guys are saying, hold on, we want a bit of that lifestyle stuff. We want a bit of that cool factor. Oh yeah, by the way, we'll sell you a bit of insurance at the same time. I like that. 
Well, okay. So again, they're much more prominent this year. A couple of years ago, this electric bike, the, uh, the Vatus, you know, it had just a little gazebo right in the uh, right in the periphery. But now look, they got a, you know, okay, it's still a single bike. It's you know, 100 miles, it's 70 mile an hour top speed. However, much more of a prominent position now uh, in the um, you know in the displays. I do love these shocks here. I mean, look at that. That's really nice. Big electric motor at the bottom. Great. Look, full charge, three hours, 45 minutes. Torque, 75 newton meters torque. Right, that's got a 70 mile an hour top speed. I mean, just look at this. Tell you what, you know, electric bikes, you know, I, I resisted, I resisted for many years. But if they're making bikes like that, if they can just increase the range for these kind of bikes and make the charging a lot more user friendly, they're onto a winner. And they will be here within a couple of years, they'll all be here. They'll all be they'll all be selling you a bike that you're gonna really want to ride. See, this is something that I haven't seen in previous years, or maybe I just didn't notice it as well. But clothing manufacturers actually taken a big stand, a big section uh, within the show. And yeah, Knox Armour, Knox Clothing, they make quality gear, but I've not seen this before. I've not seen, it's usually within the market section, that kind of thing, but never out right in the open. Watsonian sidecars. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the one that the, the Harry Potter one made. I thought it was uh, another guy made uh, the sidecar for Harry Potter. Actually, it could be wrong. If you know in the comments, let me know. I could be wrong on that one. Yeah, look at that India. Beauty. Made by Crazy Horse as well. Custom build. Nice. Again, you know, so the, the, the clothing and the, the helmet and manufacturers are coming out. You know, they're producing a display, you know, for their particular product, which is great, which is great. You know, and they're bringing out the race bikes, which they sponsor as well. You know. Look at that. Michael Rutter's race bike. Nice, lovely. Oh, Royal Enfields. As I say, you know, I am a bit of a closet flan of Royal Enfields, I've got to say. I do like them. Especially, especially that Himalayan. Especially, I, I, I just love it. I just love some of these custom bikes. Like they, they are smart as you like. The Mali Mali, yeah, no. Well, no pretty much gone all the way around that's gonna have a, another one final look at uh, Indian as I say they've really put on a, a good show for me I've got to say they're my best in show whilst I don't really care for the styling of the Indians per se or a lot of them actually overall I love the, the, the actual bike love that design just never keen on that front end and that headlight just don't like that headlight but in terms of the actual show, great, love it, love that one, love that, what's that one? Yeah, I mean, look, especially with this uh, this retro lineup here that they've got. Nice. And 1940s scout, look at that, beauty. Yeah, that road master there, look at that. 116 cubic inch engine. Look, I gotta say, it's not my style, but you can't deny that they are impressive looking bikes of that particular design, of that style. You know, and this is all iconic as well. I mean, look at it, I mean, the badging. It looks great, but I said, I just can't get over that front end. I just can't get over it, I'm afraid. But in general, they are classy looking bikes. I think for me though, it'd have to be the Dark Horse. The Dark Horse, that FTR 1200, 
gonna have to show you again because that's just look at that that dark horse chief that's that's pretty special actually that's nice and then obviously the FTR 1200 there we go on that FTR rally that looks pretty pretty awesome as well actually let's have a good look at that one Yeah. I love the way it's got it side mounted in Monoshop as well. Yeah. Yeah, look, there's no doubt that the Scouts, the FTR, for me, are the ones to look out for. That Challenger, yeah, I mean, if you're into that big. Tora, definitely. Interesting, the ones that I like the most here, Indian and the uh, the Royal Enfield. They've been uh, two good stands actually. There we go, just gonna have a little walk through Crazy Horse here now. Yeah, look at that. I say they are Indian uh, uh, dealership or distributors as well. They work a lot, they do a lot of customization on Indians. A little bit far from me, but uh, where I live. But there, there is an Indian dealership just down the road from where I live, about half an hour to 40 minute ride. Again, these Caballeros, I love these. Right, and back to Harley, back to Harley Davidson. Uh, with this live wire. Let's have a look at it. There's a lot of shake on the back there. No, it sounds, it sounds like a it sounds like an like electric bike. It sounds, uh, yeah, it's a bit naff in the sound, isn't it? it wobbles a little bit. I, I think about getting that, that power planted to, on, the, on the ground, that's going to be its biggest challenge, especially if you want to open it up. But you know, as soon as you open that up, that's just going to drain the power straight away. You know what? I thought I'd missed uh, a Motoguchi, but here we are. Look at these. I'm gonna go for Piaggio as well. So the Vespers. Yeah. Interesting. A lot of people have always asked me, "Do you like these kind of things? These kind of bikes?" And I said, "Absolutely love them. Absolutely love them." You know, people think, "Okay, because you ride." Uh, you know, you wear a leather jacket sometimes, or you ride a Harley or a big sports bike. You know, you'd hate them. Actually, I love them. You know, a Priya, Priya make great bikes as well. There's no denying they've got some great bikes. And also, it's kind of here we go. Look at this RS4 factory, <laughs> RSV, I should say, RSV4. 1100 monster and here ah oh, nice bike like that. that's a Dorsaduro 900 oh look at that essentially the uh, the hyper motard of, of from a Priya Priya great little stall there from uh, from a Priya but look here's what I wanted to show you the Motoguts, Motoguts is here. V85 TC was my best in show last year, actually. Love that bike. So ungainly, <laughs> looks weird, looks odd. But you know what? They got a good, actually they've, they've changed that sump, I think. That sump guy, that's changed. That's all a bit different from last year, I'm sure it has. Then you've got this got V7, oh, look at that. Yeah, so this is a stone midnight. I'm not so keen on the colouring, 
But the actual styling I like. Oh, look at that custom creation there. And this is the V9 bobber. Yeah, actually, do you know what? From last year, I thought it looked a little bit different. I, I thought it had a, a little bit more about it this year. Yeah, do you know what? It's, it actually is such a good looking bike as well. If you want something different, go for a Mutti Guzzi, definitely. But look at this. I mean, look at this beautiful bike. Oh. Amazing. V7 race. Oh, look at that. I always say to myself, you know, when it's in terms of Mutti Guzzi, would I have it as my number one bike or as my only bike? No. I wouldn't. Would I have it in my stable? Yes, no doubt. I would definitely have a Moto Guzzi in my stable. Probably it would be like a V7. I thought I'd come here like, really liking the V9, but actually the V7 is more, more what I'd like. There we go. Look, that just looks, that V7, that stone look. I love this sort of, that paint on the tank as well. It's almost like it's brushed aluminium. That V85 TC, that is, a, that is the bike. V7 and the V85 road bikes. They haven't got the big the big cruiser though, have they? Or the big Tourer, the, what was the MXG21, something like that? Or have I missed it? Not as big from Mutaguzzi this year, not as big. Well, pretty much walked around uh, the whole show now. Uh, all the major uh, players, uh, so is it all the Japanese ones, European ones, obviously uh, Harley, Indian, uh, good showing from them. It's been good, you know, another good show, another good layout. I don't know, it just feels a little bit smaller this year for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just getting bigger and older, but it just feels smaller. And it, you know, some of the stands are a little bit smaller. It's also, you know, interesting that space has been taken up by uh, clothing or helmet manufacturers as opposed to motorcycle manufacturers. There's definitely a few are missing from last year. Definitely a few missing, but actually overall, it's been, you know, a great, another great show, I think. Another great, um, a great motorcycle live event. I think Harley Davidson haven't really, haven't really excelled this season, uh, this year. I think they haven't put on as much of a show. Something that let me let me put it this way: in previous years, you'd be walking around and you'd know exactly where Harley Davidson was just by the noise, by the sound that was coming from there. It was a much more of a party atmosphere. However, it's only until you get inside that there's a bit of an atmosphere. Whereas you're walking by, it's just like anything else. Bit of a shame, really. Yeah, you know, again, you know, great brand, this John Doe, you know, making uh, some good stuff, good quality items. And again, taking up floor space, whereas in the past it would be bikes that would be here as well. Zontas. You know, they're not bad looking bikes, but again, they're very sort of generic. You know, it's the same sort of thing over and over again, really. Yeah, back to zero. Look, I mean, they are. I say that is pretty awesome. Look at that beauty. That is an odd looking thing, isn't it? That's great. That's definitely great bikes, definitely off road bikes. Not so sure about that sort of enduro little setup there. That's great. Supermoto. Yeah, Supermoto's never really been my thing, I gotta say. That 701, that Vitapilo, actually, that looks <laughs> pretty awesome. Let's get a better look at this. Yep, not a bad little show from Husqvarna, actually. I like that, I like that. Just uh, making my way past uh, Kawasaki again, heading now towards the uh, 
freestyle motocross event. Just another excuse to have a look at a few more bikes, actually, isn't it? Look at these bad boys. Out of all the Japanese manufacturers, Kawasaki always stand out. They always stand out for not only the design but the performance, but they're just they're just sheer grasp of you know a thrill ride. And they, they've always done it in all their bikes, they've always done it for me. Make some great off-road bikes as well. I'm surprised at how many of these insurance companies this year are actually having a much bigger prominence in the show. How much of the, the clothing manufacturers manufacture have big, much more prominence as well. But it adds to the eclectic kind of nature of this show. Really good, right, I'm gonna go to the back over there. I'm going to go to the uh, MX Arena and we're going to look at the uh, similar freestyle motocross. It's a start and the person to get it started is multiple moto trials national champion. Let's hear it for James Deville! Round in front of us in the all green. Let's hear it for Dan Wimby out the back. Following him in the all white, Samson Eaton. He's one of the best. Roche get the back up. That was nice from Dan Wimby out back. That was better from Aaron. Oh, Samson Eaton. He go, oh, heel clicker, beautiful. Oh, wow, combo. Heel clicker. It's a double can. Yes, that is a crazy seat grab switch play from Samson Eaton. Full extension seat grab from Brody Niz. Upside downer from Aaron Powley. Copy from Samson Eaton. Here comes Brody Niz and Dan Wimby the center. Cordova waving one hand backflip. Good down with me. There's that super energy. There is that super can. Come nine o'clock whip from Samson Eaton. Then there's the Indian Air Switch plate from. Oh, we're going to that flip. Let me go. Well, just come out of the Arena Cross Show. How can you not be impressed by that? Amazing riding by some of those guys. Uh, trials, actually, it was always uh, one of my first love, actually, uh, in uh, biking. Uh, always doing sort of scrambling and trials uh, when I was a kid. So uh, watching that just brings back lots of good memories. That's it from Motorcycle Live for 2019 here in uh, NEC Birmingham, the UK. Uh, some great bikes, some great stores, I'd say. You know, Harley Davidson, yeah, they've done a not a bad job actually. Um, I think just a little bit understated. Big, big stand, really big stand. Just a little bit understated in comparison to previous years. I still think um, possibly CCM Spitfire for me was probably the best bike in show. Um, the live wise has grabbed a little bit of attention as the day's gone on, but still not as much as I thought it would. Um, Indian, I think, had the best overall show or overall stand. But look, it's been a great show. Lots of bikes, lots to see. And uh, it's been an eclectic mix of bikes and um, clothing, helmets, stalls, you know, dispersed uh, evenly throughout as well. So it's been, uh, it's been a great show anyway. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the walk around and the views. Please like, share, subscribe, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Check out the website revelatoralf.com and click all the links uh, below as well. And I'll just leave you with a little bit of the, the live wire riding along. There we go.